Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an RPG in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 4. So in this episode we're going to be doing a little bit of scripting in C Sharp. Uh, we're going to create a collectible, we're going to play with a little bit of audio and we're going to develop our terrain a little bit more. So first things first, we're going to create a folder where we can store all our imported objects. So right click, create, folder, and let's just call it objects. Nice and simple. So in this folder now, I'm going to bring in uh, a heart. So I've taken a little bit of inspiration from Zelda in this case. So drag and drop this asset into here. Now you can head over to our website and you can download this heart for free. Head to the downloads and assets section and then head to the RPG series and it'll be there under episode four. So as you can see, it's imported and it's gray. So we can have this heart looking however we want. If you want a blue heart, fine. Red heart, fine. Green heart, it's all good. Head to the materials folder, which will have generated when you've imported it. Click on the material and then let's set it as we want it. So if we click over here, you'll be presented with this. Let's drag red. Let's have it a bit metallic. In fact, let's have it full metallic. And let's have a look now. So we, I don't think it'll update, but that's not to worry. So I'm just going to drag and drop this heart into the scene. Let's have it there. So I'm going to double click on it over here to zoom in. And that looks fine. Uh, yeah, I can't see any problems with that. It looks like a heart. So what I want to do with this heart is ideally I would like it to um, rotate, but we'll see what we can do with a script. So firstly, we want to actually collect this heart as well. And what we'll need to do is let's remove the animator for now because we're not going to be using the animator. So you can right click on it and remove component. Uh, click on add component and let's add some physics to it and we'll add a collider. Now, most of the time you can add a mesh collider. Uh, in some instances, um, you may find a bit of a problem using mesh collider. It can cause a bit of a problem. Um, it can use up a bit of a bit too much resource at times as well. So I generally do like to go with a few other colliders. But as I say, if you want to use a mesh collider, you can. For now, I'm going to use box collider on this. So as you can see, it's now presented with the green box surrounding the heart. That means all of that area around the heart is where it will collide with pretty much anything in the game world. If you were to use a mesh collider, it, all it would do is bring your green line all the way around the heart. So if you want to use, like I say, if you want to use mesh, you use mesh. I'm going to use box, or you could use a sphere collider or a cylinder, whichever you want. As long as we have a collider on it, that's the main thing here. So what we'll do is we'll import uh, a sound. So let's right click on assets and create another folder. And let's have this folder called audio. So this is obviously where we're going to store all the audio that we import into our game. So again, let's drag and drop this heart collect sound into here. And hopefully we should be able to, um, in fact, is it worth playing? In fact, we won't bother playing it just for now. Um, we'll do it in a second when we actually have our uh, script in place. Because it's going to be part of the script that we can have as the collect sound. So, let's write this script, shall we? So, let's create another folder. Yep, a third folder, that's right. And let's call this scripts. And in this folder, we now need to create a C Sharp script. So, right click, create, and C Sharp script. I'm going to call this heart collect. And I'm going to open it up in a program called Mono Develop. Now, some of you may have uh, Visual Studio by default. If you want to use Mono Develop by default instead, I'll show you how to do that in a moment when we finish writing this script. So, generally, when you start up a, um, a brand new script, it will look like this. Uh, it's nothing too spectacular. There's a couple of things on there that we need to go through. Um, so, Let's start off with this public class here. Now the name of it here must always match what the script is called. So if at any point you change the name of your script, you must change the public class here. 
So you can see we have void start and void update. Now, these two work in different ways. They are both technically what you could say functions, or at least they're called functions in JavaScript, but they do the exact same sort of thing. Void start will run once, and it will run when we start the script, or rather start the game, or whether the object becomes active, it will start at that point. Void update will run constantly, as it says there. So I'm going to get rid of the start as we don't actually need that. So we can just delete that. If you have anything with a double slash, anything after that double slash means that that's a note and is not a line of code. So we can get rid of that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create some variables. Now a variable is a way of defining something within the script itself. So it could be whether it's a number, whether it's a game object, whether it's some text. It could be a lot of different things. So in this particular script, we're going to have three variables, three different variables. One's going to be a number, one is going to be some audio, and the other is going to be a game object. So to define a variable, we need to do public int, which means integer, which is a whole number. And let's call this number rotate speed and then a semicolon. So here, as I say, we've called this variable rotate speed and we've ended the line with a semicolon. Most lines in code need to be ended with a semicolon. Next variable is going to be the audio that we've imported, the collecting sound. So public, and it's gonna be audio source. Now that's a capital A and a capital S. So you have to make sure capitalization is perfect in scripting as one little kind of letter wrong can just throw out the whole script. And if it's a big script, it will confuse you. So I'm gonna call this collect sound and then semicolon to end. Uh, the third variable is gonna be a game object. This is going to be the heart itself. So public game object and that's a capital G and a capital O and let's call it this heart semicolon. So you can see the way these are defined. Uh, I, I like to put public there just so as, um, it will appear. In fact I'll show you what I mean when I say it will appear in our inspector panel in just a moment. But it does that and then the next part of it is always defining what the variable is and then the third part is what the variable is called. So the reason we're using void update instead of void start is because we want this script to constantly be called every frame of the game because there is a constant motion in this script of the heart rotating. So we want to rotate this heart. So let's have transform dot rotate and that is a capital R on rotate open bracket and now we have to give the vector uh, sorry not vector three uh, we have to give um what is it one two three different numbers so we want to rotate on the y-axis because the y-axis is facing upwards and we want to rotate it spinning round rather than rotate on a weird axis which would be the x or z we want it to spin round nicely so we would define this um rotate speed on the y-axis so when you're defining anything like this, it always goes X, Y, Z, or Z. So we don't want it to rotate on the X, so we have a zero, comma. We want it to rotate on the Y, so here we put rotate speed, comma. We don't want it to rotate on the Z, so we put zero, comma. The last thing we put here is space.world space dot world now the reason we put that is so as the the object rotates relative to the world around it so it doesn't go a bit mad or a bit crazy or anything and then close bracket and semicolon so all this will do at this point believe it or not is nothing the reason it will do nothing is because we haven't actually set a rotate speed now you can do it up here you could theoretically put rotate speed equals, let's say, two. 
or you could go in your void update and before your transform update you could put rotate speed equals two semicolon so let's save that script so if we go back to unity now and let's drag and drop this script onto the heart in the hierarchy so you can drag and drop and place there on the heart and as you can see now over here we have a new component added to the heart we can see rotate speed we can see collect sound and we can see this heart so as i said earlier i like to put public because we like to see it in the inspector panel that's what that means it's right there so let's define firstly this heart so we can drag and drop this heart object straight onto there looks good next we need the audio in there now we need to get the audio working just right so what we need to do is over here on our first person controller click the arrow so we can expand it down right click on the first person controller and create empty press f2 and let's call this audio objects so within this empty game object we're going to create another empty game object so right click and create empty f2 again to rename and let's have it heart collect hopefully you probably guessed it by now we just drag and drop this heart sound onto heart collect right there and over here you'll see the components appear for the audio source we just need to untick play on awake we don't need to bother with too many other settings for now as it will by default play just fine the reason we untick play on awake is when we start our game it will mean the sound will play straight away we don't want that we only want to play the sound when we collect the heart itself so for now let's press play and all we should see is our heart rotating and we do so we've now written that script to rotate our heart constantly so next thing we want to do is we want to collect this heart don't we and we want to make a sound as we collect it so to do that let's head back to our script and after void update where we have this close curly bracket enter down just a couple of lines and then we need to create a new one so we need to do void on trigger enter open close bracket and open curly bracket and in here we need to play our sound firstly so let's have collect sound dot play and that is a capital p on play open close bracket and then semicolon so after we've played our sound what we then need to do is set the object as inactive now theoretically we could put this dot set inactive dot uh, false blah 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 but what we've done up here is have this heart so you can always refer to an object that the script is attached to by using the word this but sometimes I don't like to do that because I like to keep everything uniform and neat and tidy and I like to re refer to it in this case as this heart so this heart dot set active and that's a capital S capital A and in brackets we put false close bracket semicolon and save so next thing we need to do is we need to head back into unity and yep yeah, oh, we have okay so we have something here saying an error that is because in fact do you know what we'll uh, go into console over here and if we press clear we can see that we have an error in our script file usually if you double click this error it will take you to a line where there appears to be a problem and here we can see this highlighted gray line appears to be the problem now the reason it's the problem is because up here we've started our public class so we have the open bracket we've come down here to our update and we have another open bracket but we've also got a close bracket to say that this uh, void update is complete there so here we've got our void on trigger enter and it's open here and it appears to have closed here however there is no closing point for the entire public class so all that means is at the very bottom we just need to put another close curly bracket and it should probably highlight up here if you're using mono develop at least 
uh, orange to say that this line reflects this line, so the whole thing is now closed. So save that script and head back to Unity, and that should disappear out the console. So now let's click back on the project window. On our uh, heart itself, what we can do is drag and drop this heart collect object over here. And so far, so good. The last thing we need to do is click on is trigger on the heart's box collider or whatever collider you have. So now when we press play and walk over to our heart, we should hear the sound that it collects and we should also see the heart disappear. Excellent. So our script now works perfectly. It's not a big script, it's not complicated, but you could fiddle around with it and maybe get a few things working with it. So you could, for example, spin the heart really, really fast. Let's have 20 on the rotate speed maybe. And then save that script and then press play and let's see just how fast it rotates. So that's pretty fast. So I'm gonna set it back to two. Uh, I think I'm gonna decrease the size of it as well. So I'm gonna have a, I think by default, the scale of it may be 10 by 10 by 10. So let's change it to five by five by five and pull it out the ground to about there. So yeah, that looks pretty fine. I'm happy with that. So that's how we can do that via scripting. So we've done quite a bit in this episode, surprisingly. It may not seem it, but we've actually learned quite a lot because now you can incorporate a lot of this script into a couple of other scripts within the game. So before we go, let's, um, let's work on our terrain just a little bit more and make it look a bit more homely, we could say. So I'm not quite sure I like the lighting in all fairness. So we've, we've previously played around with lighting. So I'm going to go to window, go to lighting, and I think I want to change the ambient source back to skybox. Just makes it a little bit lighter so we can see things a bit better. Um, let's see, what can we do now? So we've got our terrain assets. Let's bring in uh, a bush. So once again, you can um, head to the website, download it for free. All the assets we use are always free on our website, so that's not a problem there. Um, so let's click on our terrain. And much like we did with the trees. And in fact, should we do it via grass? Or should we do it via tree? Let's do it via tree. So edit tree, add tree, um, and in the bush folder, let's drag and drop that bush onto there and click on add. And let's decrease the brush size to about that. And let's have a couple of bushes just scattered around the place, just for, just to make it look just that little bit more like a world rather than um, just a load of random stuff going on. Let's have some bushes over here. Okay, so you can play around. You can probably find a couple of things on the internet as well that you could probably put in. So uh, we'll leave that episode there for now. Um, so we are getting into scripting now. So we'll be doing a little bit more with scripting probably next episode. Um, I'd like to build up this area around here in, to be kind of like a bit of a town or a little village at least. Uh, we'll work a bit more with audio and um, I think we'll also play a bit more with our heart. Maybe create a particle system with it, maybe a bit of lighting on the heart so as it glows a bit. Or we'll work something out and we'll start working a bit with GUI. Um, I think with the GUI what we'll do is we'll have, when we collect the heart it will appear up here to say we've collected a heart maybe. So yeah, as I've said uh, in previous tutorials, if there's anything from an RPG series that you would like to see in this game, let me know and I'll put it in. Um, I did see someone say they wanted uh, to see hearts like in Zelda. So here we are, we've got the heart or a, at least a similar system like what we'd have in Zelda. So yeah, just let me know in the comments. So guys, until the next episode, thank you for watching.